These two cameras were released 13 years apart. Today, one costs $100, while the other costs $1,399. Both share the same lens mount and also a surprising number of essential features. But does the price difference between these two cameras tell the whole story? Well, it's not quite that simple. Representing Sony's first installment into the crop sensor interchangeable lens mirrorless world, the NEX5 and its counterpart, the NEX3, were both released in 2010. And to me, these are really Sony's mission statement on what a mirrorless camera can be. How's that for a slice of fried gold? Yeah, boy! Compared to their previous SLT cameras and the common SLR cameras of the time. They were simultaneously compact while also feature packed and they really are the beginning of that evolutionary scale of Sony mirrorless cameras as we know them today. Following on from the NEX lineup, there was the A5000 lineup and then the A6000 lineup. The first release of the A5000 was 2014. Then the A6000 later made a massive impact by being one of the most popular cameras ever sold and went on to still be sold new for years after its release. Nine years on from the first A5000 and 13 years on from the NEX5, the A6700 was released, completing the evolutionary scale of Sony crop sensor mirrorless cameras. It far exceeds the consumer level and even surpasses most professional use cases for people shooting photography and many people shooting video. While it is a newer, more expensive and a little bit larger than the NEX5, what really can it do that the NEX5 can't do? Looking at these two cameras side by side aesthetically, we can see some similarities and some differences between the two cameras. Primarily the similarities are the Sony logo and the E-mount on the front. It's ugly. It hasn't got any fancy dials. Really? I'd rather have a Nokia 3310. You can't please some people. The front and center common strength of these two cameras is the lens mount, and that is, of course, the Sony E-mount, the very large ring on the front of this tiny camera. With this lens mount, both cameras have full access to all the APS-C lenses and all the full-frame lenses from Sony, as well as the entire world of third-party manufacturer lenses, both in autofocus and manual focus. Think of the E-mount like the USB-C of lens mounts. Maybe one day Apple will even start using the E-mount on their phones. To be honest, not the weirdest suggestion. When it comes to autofocus, these cameras do differ slightly. The NEX5 has a respectable 25 autofocus points. However, the A6700 has 759 autofocus points. As well as having easier autofocus point selection through the touchscreen, the A6700 also has a few better ergonomic features over the NEX5. While the NEX5 relies on one wheel to alternate between ISO, aperture and shutter speed selection by toggling the mode that you are selecting between, the A6700 benefits from having three different dials that we can assign to all three of the manual exposure triangle. So we can have ISO on the thumb wheel, aperture on the back wheel, and shutter speed on the front wheel, which is how I have mine oriented. Using the NEX5 alternating between different modes isn't the end of the world, but it's something that once you're used to having independent wheels for each of these settings, it's kind of difficult to go back to something that doesn't have that. Taking a look at image quality, we can see from both the 14 megapixels of the NEX5 and the 26 megapixels of the A6700 that the image quality on a laptop or a monitor or even just your phone will look quite similar. It's only when you get into larger files you'll really notice the difference. Canon colors way better. Where are the Fujifilm film simulations? Okay, well, how's this for a film simulation? That preset's quite nice, actually. Yeah. I thought so. Thanks very much. If you're like me and you regularly hallucinate that you're experiencing an earthquake, then having in-body image stabilization in this A6700 is going to be very useful when you can't get steady shots when the world around you is shaking. Of course, this stabilization is useful in photography, but it's also very useful in video, which we'll get into more later. The biggest drawback of shooting with the NEX5 when outdoors is shooting in broad daylight because we are stuck with the LCD screen, which does not get up to be nearly bright enough to compete with broad daylight. The screen can become difficult, and that's when an EVF would be very useful, which the A6700 and most of the A6000 and 5000 series have been equipped with. The EVF on this camera is nothing to write home about, but at least it's there. 
and the LCD itself is actually a bit brighter compared to the NEX5. Speaking of the LCD screen, the A6700 has a fully articulating LCD screen, meaning it can be viewed straight on from above, from below, or from in front of the camera if you're trying to shoot a vlog or a self-timed photo. The NEX5, however, uses a tilt screen, so it's very useful for viewing from the back and also from above, and many people actually prefer this orientation of a screen when shooting sort of at a waist level when shooting street photography, but it is not quite as versatile if you are looking to shoot with something on higher angles and also self-shooting, like in this situation here. The NEX5 was the first of many Sony crop sensor cameras to use the cursed FW50 battery. This little nugget of hell was responsible for propping up an entire industry of third-party battery manufacturers. I'm looking at you, power extra. Whereas the A7700, complete with its chunkier, funkier grip, now use the FZ batteries, which is used by most of Sony's full-frame cameras, meaning it gets more juice from a bigger battery. It's too big to be crop sensor. This is just a full-frame camera for poor people. Okay, what? What camera do you use? I actually have an Android phone with a hundred times zoom. <sighs> Your opinion is just like not valid in this conversation. Looking into the accessories between both of these cameras, we have some interesting features. The NEX5 actually comes with an external flash when it was first made. However, this external flash does not use a typical hot shoe. It uses a unique connector type on the top of the NEX cameras. You'll notice that next to this flash mount, there is no cold shoe or hot shoe available for us to mount things like microphones, flash, or LED lights. This external flash was later replaced by pop-up flashes in the later series, and now it's being completely removed by the time you get to the AC700 because this is technically a pro body, and with pro bodies, you should always be using an external professional flash. The A6700 and more recent A6000 cameras are all equipped with a hot shoe. This is useful for mounting camera flashes, for mounting microphones, monitors, LED lights, etc. While there are workarounds for mounting things to the NEX involving cages or other sorts of rigs, it becomes quite cumbersome and defeats the aspect of having a compact camera when we attach these things. Having used both of these cameras for street photography, I feel both are reasonably well equipped for everything you need to do on the street. However, the A6700 is going to outperform in terms of speed and autofocus tracking. But when it comes to the lens selection and reliability of grabbing a single image, both of them are very well equipped. It is just that the NEX5 is a little bit slower with its autofocus and can hunt when subjects are moving a bit quickly. The A6700 has just been released and it's significantly more expensive. So what features are we getting for the money compared to the $100 of the NEX5? Well, in street and professional work, the speed and responsiveness of the autofocus, the burst shooting, and most aspects of the A6700 are insane in comparison with the NEX5. There is never any doubt that you can capture what you are trying to capture. It doesn't matter if the subject is tiny in your frame. If you set up autofocus tracking, you will track that subject all the way from one corner to the other at varying distances while shooting in burst mode. Whereas with the NEX5, we don't quite have that luxury. It's better to go for the slower moving shots, for going for the one shot instead of trying to aim for burst. Continuous autofocus in the NEX5 is nothing compared to the A6700. However, in street photography, these moments aren't always that frequent. Typically, we're not tracking things like in a sporting event, but having that tool available can be very useful in a pinch. If you want to see more of the NEX5, its images, and what it can do for such a low price, check out this video here, where I talk about the upgrade path of this camera and how it can even make you a pro photographer.